Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Yacht Crew Blogs right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Ria. I am your host, and today I'm very pleased to welcome Yvonne Bourgnon. And I'm pretty sure I've done the best job possible, but of course, it is a French last name, and it, it should sound so much better, but I, I don't quite have the accent. How are you, Yvonne? Uh, I'm fine. I'm very pleased to talk with, with, with you. I'm sure we will pass a good time. Yes, for sure. Well, you know, the reason you came across my radar was in my daily searches for good news and great news within the yachting industry and within, you know, our world in general, um, especially when it comes to the environment. I came across a story in a Canadian um, website that was talking about this boat that collected garbage and used that garbage as a way to fuel itself. Now, upon reading into this article, um, it was called The Mantra, and it's basically a giant catamaran, and you are the creator of The Mantra. Uh, yes, for sure, but uh, I have now a very good team. Huh? We are about 30% in the association, and then we have uh, 60 engineering that working since four years now, and we are very proud to present uh, the last version of this uh, giant uh, boat, for sure. And uh, we, we are very proud because it's a boat who, who can collect five to 10,000 tons of plastic every year. And it's uh, quite, uh, not small, but uh, quite a lot. Well, tell me a little bit about this boat. Now you started four years ago, tell me, what inspired you to start building this boat and the thought process that went into it and, and sort of how it came to fruition? But in fact, uh, four years ago, when uh, I talk about this project, everybody said, oh, you are completely mad, you're completely stupid, and uh, it's impossible to collect the plastic in the ocean. Uh, there is no solution at all. So yes, it was uh, quite hard to convince the people to just say, oh, maybe there is no solution, but maybe there is. So uh, we first, we have to check the scientific uh, and uh, studies, we have to do some uh, engineering uh, studies to, to check all these uh, solutions. And for sure, it was not easy because at the beginning, you have to find and to convince people to say maybe there is a solution at the end. But after two years in 2018, we were very close to find a good solution. And now the boat is completely finished on the, on the paper. So that's very good because every year we improve the solution. Every year we find better way to use this boat. And now we can say that it's not only a collecting boat, it's a boat who can do many things. In fact, it can do a scientific uh, research. It can do some uh, awareness when we go in each uh, stop. Of the uh, of the of the trip, uh, and it can do uh, you know it can promote all the economy circular project. We have uh, uh, many uh, many uh, many solution on board with uh, pyrolysis with a little boat uh, like Mobula who can collect uh, plastic. So we we need to promote uh, this solution each uh, time we we stop in the airport. There's many reasons that this boat is is an yeah. amazing thing for for the world, essentially. Now, is this boat this boat hasn't been built yet? No, we in for, uh, this boat is ready to build. Uh, so now we are in the next uh, step, but we need to find the boat builders to start building this boat. So that's uh, the choice we will do. This choice by the end of the, this year. And, uh, but for, and we continue studies, uh, the final studies for, for that. The idea is really to start building the boat in 2022 and finish it in 2024. And for sure, after we don't need to have one boat, but uh, certainly uh, 100, uh, 100 boats. But for sure, you have to, to, stop, to, to start by the first one. And uh, the good point also, say we, we find really the solution to to mix uh, the uh, uh, working boat and scientific uh, research boat because we have about 20 people who take care of the boat and the plastic on board. And we have really a factory inside the, the boat. And in the other side, we have really about eight to 10 scientific who work uh, every day to understand what's happening with this plastic on the ocean. Because actually now we have only uh, some scientific who know 
who collect the micro waste plastic. So we know how it finish inside the mouth of the fish of the birds, but we don't know what's happening between the time of the when the fish hit this uh, plastic and between the time the plastic go in the water or in the river. So we need to understand really what's happening between. And uh, this motor boat is really the good solution for that. Now, what happens with the plastic that you collect? Now, in 2018, when we present the project, uh, the boat was really able to collect about 250 uh, tons of plastic each time it goes on, on the water. And normally we have to bring back this plastic to the land. Uh, but af after some, uh, we, we, we went in many countries and we understood that uh, the solution to re for recycling, to, to, do, to know what to do with this plastic is uh, really doesn't exist really in Bangladesh, in Philippines and all these countries. So we really work hard this, since two years to find the solution to, to hit really the plastic inside the boat. Uh, to, to, to manage to, uh, well, to treat this plastic. And in fact, we use the, the technology what, that we call the pyrolysis. So it's a machine who uh, really, um, uh, uh, we, we go to high temperature, uh, uh, this plastic. So the plastic come back to a gas and uh, the gas, uh, we, we make some electricity with this gas and uh, this electricity, we need it because this boat is really with two engine, um, electric engine. So we use directly the energy that we make with this plastic. So the idea is really simple. We, we need only the wind, the sun and the plastic to make sure this boat uh, can run and we can manage all the plastic we collect. So we can even imagine this boat uh, 360 days a year on the sea, walking, walking every day. So let me ask you, is this something, this method, will this be viable in the future, do you think, for non-research boats, for casual boaters? The, the method that you're using with the collection of plastic and, and changing that into fuel for the boat, is that something that can go mainstream? Yes, because uh, uh, I, I hope I understand very well the question, but um, more we make some boats after, yeah. more these boats will just collect. So for sure, the performance of each boat, the next boat will be even better because they will only collect uh, 350 days a year. And uh, for the first boat, it's a little bit different because we want to to do some awareness, we want we need to go in each country to make sure all these people knows that this solution exists. So for sure, we need to do some communication, some re relationship with the politics and all these guys on, on the land. Mm -hmm. But we can explain that we we hope to collect three days a month uh, this plastic. So we will have the numbers. We will come back with the numbers, we, and after one or two years, we will be able to say we can collect five thousand tons, ten thousand tons, maybe fifteen thousand tons, and after we know what is the price for each ton collecting, and we already knew that uh, it's not, it's a little bit much more than what's happening on the land, but it's not, it's not two times more expensive, it's just a little more, so it's just a decision just make the decision to say we need to collect this plastic on the ocean and we can afford to do it. People are watching this interview and they say, you know what, yeah. that is a great concept. We think that, you know, we have money to invest or we think that is a great project, whether they be a scientist or whether they be a researcher. How can people become involved with your project? <clears throat> no, it's... We, we invent, for the first month, it's very easy because this boat is the boat of everybody. So we have already 10,000 uh, donators. We have already uh, 60, 60 um, uh, factory or, uh, who follow the project. So, and we want really to make sure this project uh, is uh, owned by everybody. So if we have the solution for all these uh, peoples. And uh, this is very mediatic project. So it's very easy for us to 
explain the story with the with the people who engage some money for that and for sure if you want to be a volunteer it's easy we need we have already a thousand uh, volunteers with us we need volunteer on the boat we need volunteer on the on the land we need volunteer who, who go on uh, on the philippines uh, bangladesh to 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 do the job also on the land so for sure there is a place for everybody on this project well, and right now your main focus is going to be Asia, Africa, and South America. Is there a reason for that? Yes, that's very simple because the most of the pollution is there. Really, you have 12 rivers on the Southeast Asia that uh, is about 60% of the pollution. And the, the chance we have, it's really the pollution come from the rivers. So we don't need to, to, to clean all the ocean. We just need to go at the, at the mouth of the rivers and collecting the plastic there and just waiting for the plastic. So that's the only chance we have to, for that. And so we really hope to, to make a good, uh, a good collecting because we have about 80% of the plastic floating at this time. For sure, after when the plastic go in the middle of the ocean, at the end, you have probably 19, 99% of the plastic who go who, who just sink. But uh, we don't want to wait this time. We just want to take the plastic, to catch the plastic before it goes in the ocean. Yeah, well, and eventually, when you have these 70 or 100 boats out there, you will cover the world's oceans, and you will cover every country, and you will make sure that they are operational everywhere that there is a need for. But we, we don't have only the, the good key. You know, the key is really many solutions. But when you have 300 or 400 of Montas boat and you have, uh, uh, you, you can already collect 30% of the pollution it's, uh, that exists uh, today. So it's not so bad. And with that, you can put some little boats, you know, who go in the rivers, in air balls, uh, et cetera. And uh, with a uh, thousand of little boats, also you can collect about maybe 50% of the plastic inside the rivers. And with all this, so this solution, by you, you, you can do something. The problem is actually now, it's not to, to, we know that we have the technology to do it. The problem is to convince people, politics, institution, that it's really the time now to go on the water. We have in 2060, three times more plastic in the ocean even if we do the, be the, best, the best effort to, to reduce the, poll the pollution and the plastic consumption. So we, we cannot say cross arms and we cannot say the, the awareness is enough. We, we, are re we do some awareness on the land. We, we, we do the best for that, but it's not enough. We have no, we have no choice to go on the, the water and to do something there. With, if on the land, it's just normal to collect the plastic on the when we, when you walk, when you have you have some people walking just for that. So it's normal in the future that people walk for that on the, on the ocean for sure. Well, you know what, Ivan, I think what you're doing is absolutely phenomenal, and I wish you all the best of luck. And I hope that we do see in in the very near future more than just one you know, 20, 30, 40, and, and we see what an impact it can make. Um, I will make sure to include all of the links below this interview when it airs in order for people to see the information on the project, to find out what it is all about, how they can become involved, how they can get it in their area or, or become involved in their own area. Um, you know, it looks like it's going to be really a great help going into the future and the things that you are learning through building this could be something that could be applied to mainstream boating and mainstream yachting in the future as well. I hope it will be a good inspiration for many people but for sure is the action of everybody. Everybody has to do some his action on his life and in his uh, uh, consumption on his, uh, the way to to manage the, the waste. So is the is really the project of everybody. Well, thank you, Ivan. Once again, Ivan, he is the creator of the Mantra, which is a giant catamaran that is being built and is going to go around collecting plastics out of the ocean and rivers and using that as fuel, which you know what is just one great step towards what we need. 
Um, we will make sure to provide this information. And I thank you so much for your time, even watching another edition of Yacht Crew Blogs right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Ria. I have been your host. Please tune in again for another episode.